everyone. As you heard announced at the beginning of Mass, uh, my name is Father Simeon Gallagher. I am a Capuchin priest, and the Capuchins are one of the branches of the Franciscans. I'm stationed in Denver, Colorado, uh, and I'm here just to remind you that there is life outside of Florida. <laughs> Although I must admit that I had the 8.30 Mass here this morning, and coming down from the rectory, it was colder than it was at home in Denver yesterday. <laughs> I can never figure out these Florida weather patterns, but I'm very grateful to Father Kenny, Father Frank, and the rest of the staff for inviting me to be with you. Uh, the mission begins not tomorrow, Sunday, but Monday. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in the evening at seven o'clock. Uh, Father Kenny was aware that many people might find that time frame in the evening inconvenient. People who don't drive any longer at night or people who are on irregular work schedules. So he asked if I would do something also in the morning, which I'm happy to do. So following the 8 o'clock Mass, Monday through Thursday morning, roughly at 8.30, uh, there will be a presentation. And in fact, that morning presentation is repeated in the formal mission service in the evening of the same day at 7 o'clock. So you can pick and choose the time frame each day that suits your schedule, and by offering two options, something in the morning and something in the evening, our hopes are that as many people in the adult community of the parish will participate in the mission. Uh, the bishops have become increasingly concerned about the need for ongoing adult faith formation. And I think the logic of the bishops makes sense. How can you and I, who are parents and grandparents, how can you and I, who are the adults in the world of our youngsters, hand on to them uh, the riches of our Catholic faith and the beauty of our Catholic traditions if we do not understand this ourselves at an adult level. So the focus group of the parish mission are not the youngsters and not the teenagers. It's the crowd up from that, which looking around includes most of us here this evening. So my hopes are that you will open up your schedules, choose the time frame Monday through Thursday, and come along with me and make this a week a week of grace and reflection and prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we place ourselves before the Lord. We are aware that we're always in need of his mercy, so we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
living God who governs all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time, getting up. And going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immortality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immortality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have purchased, you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Jesus walked by, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I'm sure that we're all aware that the liturgists of the church, these folks who are responsible for selecting the passages from the scriptures 
and placing them before us each weekend for prayer and for reflection, uh, that these liturgists do not choose these passages carelessly or arbitrarily. In fact, quite the opposite, that these passages that are placed in front of us weekend after weekend are chosen with a great deal of care so that those of us whose role it is to preach, namely the deacons and the priests and then the, the bishops, that we can zero in on the point that is always to be found in the readings. And indeed, there always is a point to the readings. <clears throat> Granted, sometimes the point is very, very obscure. But that's the purpose of good preaching, to surface even the obscure points in the Word of God and help us to understand what the Scriptures are teaching us. Why? So that our worldview and our mindsets are not just shaped and formed by the culture that prevails all around us, or by things like economics, or politics, or for that matter, the world of sports and entertainment, all of which it could be said are here today and gone tomorrow, but that our worldview and our mindsets are shaped and formed <coughs> by the unchanging let me repeat myself. They're shaped and formed by the unchanging values and truths that come to us from the scriptures. That is precisely why in our Catholic rituals, we have a lovely little ceremony just before the gospel is read as it was now again tonight. We have a lovely tradition. We take our thumbs and we place a small cross on our foreheads, another one over our lips, and a third one over our heart. And as we are doing that little ritual, that little ceremony, we are saying in some way, shape, or form, O oh God, may the values and the priorities that I am now about to hear coming to me from your word, may these values and these priorities be in the way that I think, be in the way that I speak, and be in the way that I behave. So that our whole life is not determined and frameworked and interpreted by politics, economics, culture, sports, or entertainment, all of which are here today and gone tomorrow, but that our lives are interpreted and frameworked by the truths that never change. And so, when we listen to these three readings this evening, from the book of Samuel, a reading from St. Paul's letter, and then this gospel from St. John, what is the point that's being offered for our reflection? Well, at the risk of sounding like I'm giving myself away to Irish exaggeration, but with a name like Gallagher, that's always a possibility, I would say that the point that's being made here this evening is of such a foundational nature that everything that you and I believe only makes sense if we get this point. And the point is, the picture or the image that you and I have in our heads tonight with regard to God as we gather here for worship. If St. Teresa of Avila is correct, and I believe she is, She's the saint who told us way back in the 16th century that prayer is nothing more than a conversation. Well, if prayer is nothing more than a conversation, 
who's on the other end of the conversation in which we are involved here tonight. What is the picture, what is the image that we have in our heads of God tonight as we gather here for this conversation? And by the way, we are involved in a conversation. It's a formal and predictable conversation, but it's a conversation nonetheless. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We're involved here in a dialogue. But who's on the other end of the dialogue? Who's on the other end of this conversation? And this is not an extraneous question. Because who's ever on the other end of this dialogue or conversation is not just going to determine the way that we pray, it's going to determine the way that we think, it's going to determine the way that we work, and it's going to determine the way that we live. These three passages tonight are presented to us because what is going on in these passages is that God is giving us the image and the picture of himself that he wants us to have. And what is the picture and the image that emerges? Samuel, who's a youngster, going off to the temple to prepare for the priesthood, like a young man would go to the seminary today. He's called three times in the middle of the night because God is seeking his cooperation. This is a God who respects us. This is a God who wants our cooperation. This is a God who has created you and me in a way that he has not created the rest of the animal kingdom. We can think. We can be introspective. We can be reflective. And we can interact and cooperate with God and his will for us. This is a God who's given us what we need for the journey of life because this is a God who looks after us and cares for us in the journey of life. That idea of the image and the picture of God, positive, caring, loving, is reinforced in the second reading tonight where we are reminded from St. Paul that we have been purchased at a great price. And from what we have been purchased, madness, chaos, craziness, anxiety, worry, anguish, we have been purchased at a great price, and the price has been paid for us in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. In his blood, we have been healed. Because this is a God who loves us. And we see that same thing happening in the gospel tonight when Jesus begins to select his early apostles. And I love the question when he said to them, come follow me. They said, where do you live? I think they wanted their junk mail forward. <laughs> And he said, why don't you just come and see? Why don't you just trust in me? I will never abandon you. I will do everything for you. Trust in me. The image of God that emerges from these texts tonight, the picture and the image that he wants us to have of him, is an image of care and love and compassion and mercy. Now, why is this point tonight important? Because tragically enough, we have come to discover, even in the believing community, even among people like me and you, even among people who are devout and prayerful and pious, even among people who would never think, for example, of missing mass on the weekend, we have found, even among these prayerful people, an image of God that has nothing to do with the image that he gives us of himself in the scriptures. I almost hate to admit this, but the fact of the matter is, every time we have a world catastrophe, people from the religious communities, regardless of their denominations, 
they will rise up and they will make statements like 9-11 is punishment. The earthquake in Haiti is punishment. Katrina is punishment. It's an image of God. Punishing, punishing, punishing. It turns God into someone who is malicious, vindictive, and mean. Where is that image in the three readings this evening? It isn't there. Just the opposite. I'm looking after you. I'm taking care of you. I will never abandon you. This image that he gives us of himself is a point to be taken into consideration, especially if any of us, myself included, here this evening, has any picture or any image of God in our heads that is not in sync with the image that he gives us of himself in the scriptures, any image that is not in sync with this image is an image that needs to be transformed. This is the point this evening, and it's a point well made and a point that we must take to heart. Who's on the other end of this conversation is not an extraneous question. Because however I picture God and deal with God and image God is going to have repercussions in every dimension of my life. Now, to be fair about this, that God gives us these loving, compassionate, and merciful images of himself in the readings tonight, this does not eliminate the reality of evil in the human community. The fact that God gives us these loving and positive images of himself does not mean that even the holiest person in this room tonight is excused from being anything other than loving and kind to the rest of the gang. The fact that God gives us these loving and images and caring images of himself does not eliminate the reality of original sin. He gives us these loving and positive images of himself for what purpose? So that you and I will be reminded about something that we were told about ourselves way back in the first book of the Bible, namely the book of Genesis. After God had finished creating the earth and the seas and the skies and the birds and everything, he looked out over what he had created and he said, I'm not finished yet. There's one more reality that I have to create. And he said, please help me with this. And he said, I'm going to create this final reality. How? In the image and likeness of myself. Think about that. You and I are made created in the image and likeness of God. And if God is kind, and God is compassionate, and God is merciful, am I right in saying that the implication is that you and I will turn to one another in our marriages, turn to one another in our families, turn to one another in our work situations, in our neighborhoods, turn to one another in our fellow students and athletes and extend to them what God has extended to us. Compassion, forgiveness, mercy, and kindness. And if we do this, what will happen? The whole human community will become enlarged in terms of humanization, the whole human community will become enlarged in terms of spiritualization, and we will all become the kind of people that God wants us 
to be. Who's on the other end of this conversation? Hey, this is not an unimportant question. And if we have any doubt as to who's on the other end, listen to these passages tonight where we are told by God himself the correct image that we should have so that we can learn again from that image in which we are made and created how to treat one another as God treats us. With all of that in mind, let's rise and pray the creed together. I believe in one God. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We turn to the Lord then this evening, and we manifest these following intentions. that the leaders of the church may continue to spread God's word with joy to the people of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. That the government of all nations seek just and peaceful solutions to con conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. That those who suffer from oppression or violence may draw strength from the suffering of Jesus and have the support of caring people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that scripture's teaching that our lives and bodies belong to the Lord may increase our reverence for all human life and our awareness that only God can give it or take it away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the increase of worthy vocations to the sacred priesthood, the consecrated life, and the permanent diaconate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those serving in the military, may they be protected from harm and return home safely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the gentle repose of the faithfully departed, especially Jose David Rojas, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For Deborah J. Riley, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear And we pause for just a moment to add our own intentions. Lord, tonight we are grateful for the insights that come to us from your Word, especially the care and the love and the compassion you continually show to us in the journey of our lives. May that mercy and compassion we have received become a way of treating one another. We place this before you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> The gift bearers this afternoon are Matt Eglin and Elise Foote, and the second collection today is for the music ministry.
please join in singing number 667, The Church is One Foundation. Number 667. <laughs> Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. <laughs> Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, 
commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh, we are sac that are sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
great evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other some sign.
reading is number 349, Soul of Christ. Number 349.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread be one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Kindly you open the inside back cover of your music hymnal to pray the prayer and <coughs> Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O Lord Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil of all, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you to praise to you all your saints. Kindly be seated for our usual announcements. We have the parish of Our Lady of the Lakes. I would like to welcome to our parish, Father Simeon Gallagher. And I would like to invite you to market calendars for our parish mission starting Monday to Thursday. For those of you who won't be able to drive in the evening, which I think for some is a little bit of a challenge, we have a morning session. That will be after the 8 o'clock in the morning mass, we would have the, uh, the uh, session of Father Simeon. And for those who are working and those who are not available in the morning, we also have another session in the evening at 7 o'clock. So we're all covered. So we have a very, uh, very uh, energetic, uh, mission priest with us, so please avail of that, a very holy priest among us. And also I would like to announce that for, uh, for those who are, uh, you know, if you know Deacon Torres, one of our uh, deacons here in the church who serves in the Spanish Mass, he will be retiring soon, so I would like to invite you to, uh, to a retirement reception for him, which will be uh, by the end of this month. So that's our, uh, our way of saying thank you to Deacon Torres, who has been serving as a deacon for the past 26 years. And uh, it's a wonderful uh, ministry that he did. He's just retiring from, from the liturgical functions, but he will still be working as a deacon, uh, giving communion to the sick and the other uh, things that he does uh, so lovingly for the past years. And, and we are fortunate for that. So thank you again to Deacon uh, Gilberto, and hopefully you will be there for the farewell reception retirement for him on the last Saturday of the month of January. Uh, as of now, we have our men's retreat going on. Please include the men of our parish who are undergoing the retreat that uh, they will always be inspired and so they can serve the parish well. Thank you. May I request our communion minister to the sick to come forward. My dear sister, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and homebound. I assure them of the prayers and support of this community and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join now in singing number 765. They'll know we are Christians. 765. Mm -hmm. 